Welcome, Augustana, to this week's preaching text as we engage and reflect on uh, the passage that I will be preaching on Sunday morning. Thank you for joining me. I hope you have a Bible with you. Uh, the text for Sunday is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, verses 1 through 4 and verses 51 through 58. So we'll be reading the very beginning of the chapter and the very end of the chapter. Uh, this is uh, the second to the last chapter of Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. Uh, there's some interesting historical aspects that are important to remember as we look at this Pauline letter. Uh, it's actually one of the most important chapters, I think, in the New Testament. Uh, it's inspirational. Uh, it's important for the historical grounding that it gives us. Uh, more than likely, this letter was written about 20 to 25 years after the death and resurrection of Jesus. And most of the first followers of Jesus were more than likely still alive. So this isn't very long after uh, the death and resurrection of Christ. And um, uh, the eyewitnesses, uh, the people who followed Jesus were still alive as Paul begins to found these churches throughout the Mediterranean as the message of Christ gets spread from Jerusalem. And so this, this letter is um, written 20 to 30 to 40 years before any of the Gospels were even written. So this is some of the earliest uh, Christian witness writings that the church has, these letters of Paul. I'm a big fan of Paul. Uh, I think Paul's theology uh, speaks to my heart, uh, to the needs of the church, how he understands Jesus. And if you take a look with me at chapter 15 at the beginning, uh, one of, what, what Paul is doing here is he's, after this long letter, the Corinthian church was struggling with divisions. Uh, which leader did they want to follow? How did they handle food sacrifice to idols? Uh, there was sexual immorality that the community was dealing with. Uh, we heard from Pastor Torgerson last week as she preached on the love chapter, chapter 13. Uh, that was Paul's way of of helping to refocus this Corinthian community on what is of most importance to them as a community, and that, of course, is to love one another. Now in chapter 15, as he comes to the end of the letter, he, in effect, goes back to the basics, back to the beginning of what his proclamation was to this community in terms of what is most important to them as followers of Jesus Christ. And if you look at the first four verses, which we're going to be reading on Sunday morning, uh, this is really foundational kinds of stuff that um, is, is so important. He says, now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you. And now listen to the participles here, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. And then he goes on in the next two verses to tell us what that message is. And this is the heart and soul of Christianity. He says, for I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Sounds like the Apostles' Creed, doesn't it? It's the basics of the faith. And I love the way Paul talks about this, where he says, I hand it on to you as of first importance, the most important thing, what I in turn had received. Chapter 9 and verse, verse Acts, where Paul meets the resurrected Jesus on the Damascus Road, that's where he receives his commission. He receives the good news of Jesus, not only his death, but his resurrection. And that's the message that he had been passing on to the Corinthians. I hand it on to you. I love the image of that phrase. It means person to person. It means that we are in relationship with one another. It means that as Christ comes into my life, I hand him on to someone else. I pass on that message, that good news, that Christ died for our sins, that he was buried, that he, would, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. And what Paul is doing here at the beginning of this chapter, he's setting up a conversation about the resurrection. Now, I would encourage you to read the whole chapter. It's rather long, uh, but 
in the body of this chapter, Paul speaks to the resurrection. He makes an argument for it. He argues for the importance of it in the faith. And he says our faith is grounded in not only the reality of the crucifixion and, and the death that is present in our world and in our lives, but God's transformative power that takes place in the, in the, in the resurrection. Uh, it's, it's a rather detailed argument. It's lengthy, and uh, I commend it to you. I suggest that you read it and look at it. And then, then it brings us to the end of the chapter, this glorious ending that Paul writes about here, uh, after he goes through this long discourse about the resurrection and why Christ was raised from the dead and the resurrected body and the physical body. And then in chapter 15, verse 51, he comes to this glorious close and he says, Listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. For this perishable body must put on, the, uh, put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability, and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul speaks about the mystery of the resurrection, of the resurrection, the power of the resurrection. And because of that, we need not fear death. And it is the core message of the Christian church, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The resurrection is confirmation of not only who Jesus is as Son of God and Son of Man, but what he accomplished for us through the cross in God raising him from the dead. And then the very last verse in chapter 15, the therefore. As I share with my Bible study students all the time, whenever you see a therefore in Scripture, particularly with Paul, you know that something important is about to be said. And he ends the chapter with these words, Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. He calls the Corinthians beloved, a community that argued with them, that had differences with them, but he loved them, he shepherded them, and he wanted them to know what was of first importance that not only had been given to him, but was handed, but he handed on to them this news of the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This beautiful, beautiful passage that we're going to be looking at on Sunday morning is um, is very, very important. And uh, take some time to read it, reflect on it, and uh, listen to what it has to say to you. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning. God bless.